I believe all of y'all are here tonight because Sable Trail Transmission plans to build a natural gas pipeline project from eastern Alabama from southwest Georgia into central Florida. Mitch Shields will talk about the details of that project in a little bit, but I want to talk about what the, what the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission's role is in this process. As Kevin pointed out in one of the slides, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission is responsible for the siting and construction of interstate natural gas transmission pipelines. National Environmental Policy Act, NEPA, as Kevin pointed out, requires that the Commission considers the environmental impacts of the project. My job as the Environmental Project Manager is to conduct that environmental analysis. So we have a pretty lengthy environmental review process that we are just beginning that I'm going to talk about right now. In October of 2013, Sable Trail Transmission requested that the Commission enter into its pre filing process with them. The pre-filing process is a process established by the Commission to work with project applicants such as Sable, interested citizens, potentially affected landowners, state and federal agencies, get all these parties involved in the early phases of a project's development. During the pre-filing process, a pipeline company will present to the Commission for public review preliminary information about the project. This is something that Sable's already done. They've provided what we call draft resource report of 1 in 10, and that is basically a, the, the information of what they plan to do, a little bit about how they plan to do it, and a little bit about the alternatives they've considered. All of us are going to work together over the next several months in this pre-filing process to essentially what I like to call shake the bushes and find out what issues are out there and what would affect the development of this project. My job is, as I said before, to conduct an environmental review. I do this much better and much more efficiently when I'm able to work with people such as yourself and the local and federal state agencies to find out how this project could affect the, the area, how it could potentially affect landowners, how it could potentially affect the environment. And when I say the environment, you know, everyone automatically thinks birds, bees, and bunnies, but it's also the human environment. It's people where they live, their health, their safety, that's all part of the environment. The pre-filing process for this project is going to last almost about a year. It's a very large project and, and parts of it very complex project. The focus, or one of the main focuses of the pre-filing process and, and the first general environmental review process is an alternative analysis. The first question people generally ask, and the first question I ask is, is why here and why this way? People want to know, can it go another way? And that's what an alternative is. What is an alternative to this project? So the heart, and as it's called sometimes of the NEPA analysis, is the alternatives analysis. Alternatives include a lot of things. First of all, it, it includes a no action alternative. What happens if you don't use this project? There are system alternatives. Are there other ways to use existing systems to transport that natural gas? Many folks may be aware that there are other natural gas pipeline systems in Florida. These are the questions that we ask, these are the questions that you ask of us. There are major route alternatives. Getting between point A and point B, there's a couple different ways to get there. Actually, there's more than a couple ways to get there. We all have to work, we have to work with the companies and we all participate in that process to determine which way is the best way to get there. There are alternative energy alternatives. You know, a lot of people are concerned about solar and, and use of fossil fuels. Those are all terms that we consider in our, in our analysis. There are intermediate pipeline alternatives, maybe pipeline alternatives that go 10 miles you know, around something or 10 miles another way. And there are small pipelines. Or maybe it's only 500 feet that makes a difference, or maybe can you move it over my property line? Those are, are all things that are considered in the process. Another important part of this process is public comment and scoping. And this is what we're here doing tonight, is part of the public comment and scoping. Scoping is what we do to get out there and ask people about their concerns about the project. We'll send you, we sent you something in the mail, most likely. Uh, companies have been out here asking you about your thoughts about the project. We're here tonight to have this meeting so you can learn a little bit more about us and give us your concerns and comments about the project. The Commission values your comments. They're very important to us. They help us focus our environmental analysis. We need your help to conduct our review. All y'all live here. I live in Washington, D.C. You know your area better than I do, so I need your help to do my review. Once the pre-filing process is complete, we have what there, the company will file a certificate. And I want to say right now is this project has not been approved. This 
project has not even officially submitted an application. This is a pre-application process. Like all projects, the company's doing its homework, and we're doing our homework. And this is that, that, that part of the process where we all talk beforehand. If, at the end of the pre filing process, they decide that they want to move forward, they would file an application with the commission. Myself and other members of my staff would look at, and the staff members I work with, we work around, would look at the certificate application, make sure it's complete, and make sure we have an understanding of what the environment here looks like, and we prepare an environmental impact statement, as Kevin pointed out. In our environmental review, we'll look at a number of resources. Uh, for instance, soils and geology, groundwater, surface water, and wetlands. I think groundwater is probably one of the number one issues we've heard so far in, in our work here. Vegetation, fisheries and wildlife, land use, residential impacts, cultural resources, air noise quality, pipe integrity and safety, and cumulative impacts. And cumulative impacts is something I've heard a lot in, in southwest Georgia. It's, there's already one pipeline going through here. And now there wants to be another. And if you add the effects of those two pipelines, those are cumulative effects. In other parts of the country, there's three or four pipelines, yeah, and there becomes a point where those things start to add up, and that's, that's part of the review we do. Really quick, I just wanted to show you that there is, this is an environmental impact statement for a project that was done a couple of years ago. It is roughly uh, several hundred, a uh, couple hundred pages long. As I said before, Federal law requires that we do a thorough environmental analysis. And when we do, we report all that information in environmental impact statement. The EIS will describe the proposed actions. It will analyze the potential environmental impacts of the project. It will also describe what the environment is here. It will also analyze alternatives. The EIS will provide conclusions, what the FERC has found, it, what do we think will happen if this project is built? Or what do we think will happen if that alternative is used? So we provide those conclusions for the public to review and comment on. And we will, in addition to the measures that the companies propose to minimize impacts, we will provide additional measures. Impacts, you know, we're looking to avoid, minimize, and mitigate impacts. Once we have finished completing a draft environmental impact statement, we will send that out to everyone on the environmental mail list. You'll have a chance to look at that and tell us if we got it right, tell us where things could be different or better. And once that, that we received your comments on the environmental impact statement, we'll prepare a final environmental impact statement. The final environmental impact statement will be issued again, and the commission will use that final environmental impact statement in its decision-making process. So that is, is in a nutshell, the, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission's environmental review process. I'm going to turn it back over to Kevin, who's going to touch on a couple more things, and then I can come back and answer a couple questions about the review process if you have some. Okay, so um, we used to comment um, tonight. Obviously, what's over here tonight in another couple minutes is comment on the project. Tell us what you think, what's important. Uh, so tonight in person. If you think of something later, and you go home, chill on this a little bit more, uh, you can send those to us online, electronically. Um, that's our preferred method. Uh, my handwriting is not so great, so uh, I'm sure you guys have great handwriting, but e-comment online is a great way to do that. Um, we have some materials outside. If you grab them, it walks you through how to navigate our website and shows you how to file those online with us. Um, if you want to write things out by hand, that's fine too. You can mail those into us. The address is up here on the screen. It's also in the materials outside as well. Um, that's a great way to get stuff to us as well. Um, John reads everything that comes in. We all read all the stuff that comes into us. Um, so make sure if you do something, write something down by hand, uh, include the project docket number. That's PF 14-1 uh, for Sable Trail. Uh, again, those numbers are written down outside too if you forget. So again, uh, that information is up on our website at FERC.gov. That's where you can go and submit those comments. Uh, we everything that gets submitted to us, everything the applicant files, every letter we send out to the applicant um, gets cataloged in what we call an e-library. So you can go on there and you can search through all that stuff. You can find all the information that we've issued to the company um, that they've uh, submitted to us. Uh, you can even find your own comment letter if you submit it to us. If you mail something in, within a couple days it should show up on there. Um, we have this feature called e-subscription. That's what all of the environmental staff at FERC uses to track the project. 
Uh, basically, if you sign up for this thing called e-subscription, you'll get an email every time someone sends something in. So for large projects, it can be a lot of information. So if you're you know, trying to look for stuff or you're searching on there every day, it can kind of cut down on the time that you're spending looking for stuff because it'll give you an email in your inbox that says, hey, today FERC issued uh, a letter to the company. It gives you an alert to say, hey, maybe I want to check out and see what that letter was. Uh, in addition, uh, the environmental mailing list is really important. As John said, uh, we send out that EIS to everyone, the environmental impact statement. So if you didn't, then just a friendly reminder to sign up on our mailing list to make sure that we've got your correct address so we can get that EIS to you sometime down the road when it would be done. Um, I guess now we can, if there's any process questions on the environmental FERC review process, uh, I'd love to take some of those questions now to kind of clear up the air on how it is that we uh, review the process or the project. <coughs> Um, stick your hand up. If, if you could, could you come down and to the podium, just so that we can give you credit for your question. Um, it's not school, but you know, we just want to make sure you get your name down. Uh, everything is being reported by our court reporter, so your name will be placed in the record with your question, and then our answer will be there too as well. I think I saw a hand come up, so you can just come on down. 